So I think we're going to get started. Um, just to orient you, I wanted to introduce you to the people behind me. I'm like, do I know yeah, everyone? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, Jacob Metivier. That was pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Meredith Shadwar, Jill Abrams, and Justin Kolber. This is the consumer team who's helping with this lawsuit. Today, I am announcing that my office is suing TikTok for violating Vermont's Consumer Protection Act in ways that harm our kids. TikTok baits children into excessive and compulsive use on its platform, and it lied about the safety of that platform. Its addictive platform is harmful to kids. TikTok also operates an illegal virtual economy, which uses a live stream function to exploit kids. In addition to this lawsuit filed here in Vermont by my office, 13 other attorneys general across this country have sued TikTok today. Previously, seven states also sued TikTok. At every instance, TikTok has prioritized their bottom line over the safety of kids. TikTok has been the target of federal action, public outcry, congressional hearings, and most recently a call from the U.S. Surgeon General that there be a warning place on products like TikTok. None of these things have stopped TikTok from engaging in the acts outlined in our complaint, and to this day, TikTok's misbehavior continues. TikTok has used its position as one of the most popular social media platforms among young people to weaponize its platform and manipulate young users into excessive use cycles. Tens of thousands of Vermonters are on the TikTok app and 50% of Americans are on the TikTok app. TikTok uses behavioral and neurobiological sciences, techniques, and tricks to make the app more addictive and keep kids on the app, users, but we're targeting especially kids. These same tricks are used by slot machines. And there are tricks like variable rewards, infinite scroll, push notifications, filters, and their powerful recommendation engine and for you page. The U.S. Surgeon General has warned that unchecked use of social media has a, quote, profound risk of harm to the mental health of children. Research has shown the detrimental effects of compulsive and prolonged app use, including body dissatisfaction, disordered eating behaviors, and low self-esteem. In 2021, nearly half of Vermont's high school girls and over one third of the state's high school students reported poor mental health, including persistent feelings of stress, anxiety, and depression. TikTok bakes, baits children into obsessive use through an algorithm and scrolling feature that deliver highly individualized, curated content from which kids struggle to disengage. As parents and teachers have tried to reduce social media use, our children are confronted with strategic and effective responses from TikTok. They are pinged during school and at all hours of the night with notifications from the app, waking them from sleep and interrupting their schoolwork. We expect our children to make rational decisions to disengage from social media, while a highly sophisticated platform uses every, it uses every day has tools to manipulate them into engaging further. As the company deployed these features, it also lied to parents, teachers, and all of us about the safety of the app, downplaying the risks and the lack of affirmative steps the company has taken to protect kids and keep their apps safe. TikToks, lies include misrepresenting any proactive steps the company takes to moderate conduct, content, conduct age verification, or to mitigate harm to kids. The truth is we have all seen kids struggle to put down their phones, suffer from mental health issues exacerbated by social media, engage in dangerous challenges and much more. Vermont's complaint also targets harms to our children by TikTok's illegal virtual economy, which, ha which it has used to profit from the exploitation of our children. TikTok pairs live streaming with a virtual currency. Without any meaningful age restrictions, TikTok allows users to broadcast themselves in real time while also receiving virtual coins from other users that can be cashed out for real money. 
This has resulted in terrible and predictable outcomes. As early as 2022, public reporting confirmed that these two features combined were turning TikTok into the equivalent of a virtual strip club where older users could pay unsuspecting kids to perform sex acts. Here's the other thing. Operators of a virtual currency TikTok like TikTok, like, sorry. Operators of virtual, virtual currency like TikTok has been using are required to register and implement safeguards to prevent against this exact type of harm. But TikTok has operated its virtual economy without getting the required licenses or implementing those safeguards. TikTok makes up to a 50% commission from each financial transaction made on TikTok Live. That's highly lucrative for TikTok but it's harming Vermont's kids and I won't stand for it. I wanna note, when you see the complaint, you're gonna see certain portions of the complaint that have been redacted as required by statute and also by the confidentiality agreement that we had with TikTok during the course of our investigation. These redactions relate to certain confidential materials or information that we gleaned during the process of our investigation. And we are hoping that the court will unseal the complaint in the next few weeks, which will provide more context for this lawsuit. Young people deserve the same basic protections on social media platforms that they are afforded in our society, including protection, protections from criminals seeking to sexually exploit them. And parents, guardians, and teachers deserve honesty and transparency about the safety and features of the TikTok app. Vermonters elected me to stand up to big corporations and protect children. Overwhelmingly, I have heard from parents and from teachers that they are concerned about the harms of social media and the impact that social media has on children. I am suing TikTok to hold them accountable for knowingly contributing to the mental health crisis in this state. Not one more Vermonter should die as a result of a crazy TikTok challenge. And I'm happy to take questions at this time. Currency. You know, our focus is on getting the harm to stop. That's what we want. We want them to stop harming kids. So that's our number one focus. In addition, the complaint will lay out at the last page other forms of relief, and that includes $10,000 per violation per consumer. That's what the Consumer Protection Act affords us when we are successful, and we are also asking for that. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Jacob. 50% are users of, I, I mean, I'm saying the app, but it's the platform. They're users of the platform. The truth is TikTok knows all that we have just described. They already know. They could choose right now to do something about this. And that would be the best outcome. If they just said, okay, the jig is up, we're gonna fix this problem. That would be the best outcome. We've negotiated with them for two years. We have been unable to have a meeting of the minds or even close to one, frankly, that led us to this point to protect Vermont's kids. Yeah. It's also lawn mowing time. I feel like I keep my opening remarks just in the nick of time, but did anyone else have any questions? I can also come to you and if it, the sound is a problem. You wanna do that? Okay. Well, I just wanna say thank you again for coming to the press conference and thank you to this amazing team for all the work that they've done putting this together. I will tell you, I have been very um, worked up about this in particular and it's because of my own observations and all that I hear about when I travel through around the state and I hear from teachers and parents what their concerns are and the number one thing they always tell me is social media. So it feels really good to be at this point when we can be saying it's time to fix the problem and address the harms and that's what we're asking TikTok to do. So thank you. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, and aunt. Yes. You know, that's something that I, I've repeatedly said is it does feel personal when you have people who are close to you and you see them like, you know, on the apps. I actually found about I found out about TikTok through my niece. It wasn't called TikTok then, it was called Musically. And I didn't get it at all. Um, I didn't understand how <laughs> I like I don't why is this a feeling, but you know, it is a problem. Um, we have a lot of uh, you know, lack of sleep. Um, the, all those mental health harms, the body dissatisfaction with the filters and everything, um, it's really disturbing. So it feels good to be in this place where we can really start to think about moving ahead and solving the problem. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna give this to Natasha. Can I, can you hold this? Let me go get some batteries. Oh. Do you want to take a picture? We're going to do a pose picture like we did for the last so we're not open. My mouth isn't open. And the t- Natasha will. I'll take that. Okay. Thanks.